it's sweater weather. Well, sort of. What do I mean by almost sweater weather? Well, we went from 98 degrees to like 72 literally overnight because, you know, cold front came in, thunderstorms, rain for two days. It was glorious. So that made me really excited for my sweaters. So I decided to count them and see how many I have hanging up in my closet that I have made you know, for myself. I am not counting uh, baby sweaters because I'm not the one wearing them. I'm not counting the one that I made for my middle child, which was Darth Vader. I'm not counting that one because I'm not the one wearing it. And one of them on my list is actually the second time I have made it because the first one, I gave it away to a teenage coworker because it fit her better than it fit me. And so then I made it again. So I have 13 in my closet and we are just going to pick one randomly from the pile that fell over and go from there. So in no particular order, here are the sweaters that I have made. Sweater number one is Stripe Pipe. This is I think my favorite sweater out of the bunch because I just love the stripes <laughs> so much and oh, it's so warm. It's one of my favorites, if not the most favorite. If you have been living under a rock, eh, yeah, let me rephrase that. If you are not part of the fiber world in any way, shape or form, you have probably not heard of the Stripe Pipe Sweater by Veronica Lindbergh, also known as Kutova Kika on Instagram and here on YouTube. This, it well, partly because of the stripes. <laughs> That's why it's my favorite. And it's a great stash busting. It's a DK weight pattern. So I used my DK weight bin over here and I did leftover North DK from Expression Fiber Arts from a previous project and went for it. So I have, I had this dark gray main color. Okay. And then the purple or plum, I should say, and then black. And then I ran out of black. And so then I finished off my black stripe with red, ran out of red, finished off my red with the raspberry. And then I used the raspberry as the um, detailing on the bottom ribbing, the cuff and the neckline. Um, and then the sleeves have the light blue in a creamy gray color. So all of this was leftover yarn except for the main color. The main color I had three full skeins that I hadn't used in anything yet. This was before I disciplined myself to only buying the yarn for a project and not just because it was pretty. It's still a work in progress but it's mostly mostly good now. Um, yeah so I made this. I started this on Halloween October 31st. Uh, 2023 and I finished it November 11th 2023 this was one of three sweaters I made during November um, yeah so this I love it so much as you can see I have worn it because it's pilling I need one of those shaver things so I can shave all the pills off my sweater but I love this one so much. I am so excited to start wearing my sweaters again. This one might get a lot of wear <laughs> this year, kind of like last year. All right. Um, what size? Oh, I made the size medium. Um, I don't check my gauge because I don't care. I don't make gauge swatches guys. So if you're here for exactness in making, you're not going to find that here. I, I don't make gauge swatches. I check after the fact, like after my sweater is done, um, or like in the middle, but I don't make a swatch beforehand. Anyway, so I used North DK from Expression Fiber Arts and I love it so much. All right. This next one is 
the one that I made two of and I, when I gave the first one away. It's the Coziest Cable Cardigan from Mama in a Stitch. I first came across this pattern on Lion Brand. It was sold as a kit and I made it in the color of the sample. Um, and I did the seaming like weird on the shoulders and so it was a little too tight on the upper arms. That's probably why, I, actually no, that is the reason why I gave it to my teenage coworker. Um, so I did that in sometime in 2020, I made the first version and I made the second version in 2022. Um, now the yarn used in the original pattern has been discontinued by Lion Brand. So I used um, Hue and Me by Lion Brand. So it is a chunky weight yarn. So chunky pattern, bulky pattern, bulky. It's a bulky weight pattern, not chunky. Um, and it uses 10 millimeter needles. So a size 15, um, these thick ones right here. It uses these needles. I didn't use these ones. I didn't have Chiago yet. I used some wooden ones. I don't like wooden needles. Anyway, so here is my second version of the sweater. I don't remember what color I used, um, but as you can tell, I've, all, I've also worn this one a lot and it is also pilling. So. I really need one of those electric shaver thingies, but I do have an issue with this though. I don't like to have my cardigans open always on the side. I like to close it a little bit. So I need, I have somewhere in one of these little cubby bucket things, I've got a toggle button I'm going to put on this when I eventually remember and get down to it. Um, but yeah, so this, is a really easy construction, very easy for someone who has never made a cardigan before or a sweater of any kind. It's literally just rectangles and you sew them together. The easiest thing. The cables are also very easy. She has uh, photo tutorials in her pattern on how to do it. Um, so the, it's no longer available as a kit from Lion Brand. So to get it, you have to go to either her blog or her Etsy shop to get the pattern. But it's the coziest cable cardigan and it is long. It goes past the booty <laughs> and I love that. But it's so warm and I used, yeah, I said that already. I used the Lion Brand Hue and Me because the original one was discontinued. What was it? Color Made Easy or something? Um, yeah, I love, I love these big fat cozy cables because it does make it feel cozy. And this is my like sitting at my desk and working type sweater. Uh, yeah. All right. This one I made sometime in 2020. This comes from Your Inspirations. It is the Everyday Knit Cardigan. It's tweed. Are we, we're really not surprised, are we? I did not use the recommended yarn. I used yarn in my stash and it's no longer available because the store no longer exists. It was AC Moore and I used the, the in-house brand, what was it? Studio Nicole, I believe it was Studio Nicole. It was like a very soft acrylic yarn, like <clears throat> better than Red Heart. <clears throat> Red Heart is trash. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little tickle in my throat there. <laughs> but I thought for the longest time that um, I made it too long. And it's actually, it hits just where it's supposed to according to like sample pictures. I also thought I made it too wide. But then again, I believe that the yarn that I picked is slightly thicker than the yarn that they use. Hi puppy. Um, which is, it's also a worsted weight, a size medium. <laughs> we got a puppy. Hi. And wet. This one was probably sli slightly thicker than the other one. But I, I like it. I kind of want to make another one, but I also kind of don't because I have different cardigans that I can make now. And I was still 
learning how to make cardigans and sweaters. Um, I actually think this was the first sweater slash cardigan thing that I knit back in 2020. I'm thinking back timeline wise. We were living on the other side of the state. I was getting more and more into knit. I think I made three sweaters in that house. Um, they're all in this pile. Well, the first, <laughs> the one from Mama in a Stitch, the first example I made in that house. The second one I made in this house. But I think I made like three sweaters in that house. I'm very proud of me. Continuing on, <laughs> this one from Your Inspirations. It's not a bad pattern. It is very good for a learning beginner how to knit type how to knit a sweater pattern. And I think it turned out great. It fits my son better than it fits me. <laughs> I, I, he's taller, he's 15, he's taller than me. It's not that hard because I'm five foot four and it fits him better. So I might just like give it to him one of these days. All right, this next one comes from Lion Brand and <laughs> It is the Lumi sweater. This is also one of the three that I made November of 2023. I started this on November 14th and I finished it on November 27th. I did use the recommended yarn because I bought the kit and I think I picked the color that was used. Um... Yeah, hold on. No, I did not choose the color in the sample. I choose the color Rainy Day, which is kind of like a grayish, dirty white color. Anyway, the yarn is the Feels Like Butter. And at first feel, it is very soft. Um, but as you go along and work with it, what? It dries out your hands like none other it yes ma'am give me a minute okay um it dries out your hands because it is a polyester yarn and so I decided to make the sweater a crop top to go over dresses because I was just done working with it I didn't want to do it anymore same thing with the sleeves um so I have cropped body and cropped sleeves and I don't feel bad about it at all. I do like the lace detail. Um, this is done in reverse stockinette. So you have the pearl side showing instead of the uh, knit side. I did the size medium. And again, I don't do gauge swatches. Okay, I just take my measurements and I pick from there and I'm usually right on anyway with whatever the designer picked. So, I'm a rebel, guys. My Lumi sweater, one of three. I made it cropped because the yarn was pissing me off. But, yeah, I wear it over dresses all the time when it's chilly, but it's not quite enough for a full thick sweater this just gives you like an extra layer like when your arms are cold but nothing else is cold this like works fantastic um yeah so this was done last year 2023 and we are going on to the next one all right this next one i have a video on this this is the sweater that kind of got me out of my knitting funk earlier this year it's my patriotic fourth of july sweater Okay, this comes from Lion Brand. It is called the Flag Pullover. Um, I started this June 22nd and I finished it on July 4th. So pretty fitting. Um, it is, from remembering it is done in pieces and then seamed together. I did not use recommended yarn. I used stash yarn. So for the red, I did um, Lion Brand Pound of Love in the color Cherry. The white is actually two different colors. I alternated 
white stripes <laughs> um, with the colors. So one of them is um, Red Heart with Love in the color Erin. And the other one is from AC Moore uh, in Antique White because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough of the AC Moore color because I can't get any more. The store no longer exists. So I alternated which color on the white stripes. And the blue is also from AC Moore. It was a like mystery pack of yarn, so I don't actually have the color name for it. And anyway, the stars were supposed to be um, duplicate stitch, but that takes forever and I didn't want to. So I decided to crochet stars and put them on instead. Now I still need to do the rest of the sleeve front and back with the stars, but I think this works just fine for now. Um, I have a secret with this sweater. I haven't blocked it yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we still have some warm days. I can probably do that anytime. I have a couple sweaters in here that I haven't blocked yet. I know how bad of me, but that's all right. I have plenty of time. I could even wait until next year if I want to, because this is for watching the fireworks because fireworks at 11 o'clock at night is kind of chilly. Yeah. So here is my patriotic sweater. I made the size medium large. Now, again, I think I'm going to say this like every single time I don't do gauge swatches. So do your own thing. Just know that this is the size that I made. My gauge is usually right on anyway. Yes. So this sweater got me out of my knitting funk. Um, I, yeah, I just decided, you know what, let's do something for the holiday. And I went and I found a, um, patriotic flag sweater pattern. And it's from Lion Brand. It's called the Flag Pullover. Next one was, I believe, the first sweater I ever made for myself. It was, it's crochet because I was not comfortable making knit garments yet. Um, I hadn't made that leap. I was still making, you know, shawls and things. Um, but this comes from Your Inspirations. It is the Big Easy Crochet Pullover. Yeah, that's it. Um, oh, it's backwards. Here it is. It's this lovely jewel toned one. It, I did use suggested yarn. It was uh, Karen Simply Soft. I cannot tell you what the name of the color I picked is, but I love the color so much. I haven't worn it since then. <laughs> it is a little tight. I also have gained a few pounds since 2019. That maybe a reason. That's neither here nor there. Um, I believe it was just alternating rows of half double crochet and single crochet. Um, it was done in pieces and then seamed. And I had it done. I think I wanted it done in time for Mother's Day. I think it was spring 2019 because we were still in Eastern Idaho and spring is still chilly and it, we can still get snow over there. So I had it done for cold weather. Um, I do have a secret about it though. I haven't woven in my ends. Don't tell anybody that. No, it's fine. I don't care what you do. Yeah. So I haven't woven in the ends on this sweater. Um, that's not the reason that it has stopped me from wearing it. I haven't worn it because I actually prefer my knitted sweaters over my crocheted ones. I only have two crocheted ones in here. Um, I'm not drawn to crochet sweaters as much as I used to be. I prefer knit ones over crochet. That's, I'm not throwing shade on crochet. I was a crocheter before I started knitting, but I just, I prefer knit ones over. But this was a fairly easy pattern from what I remember. Very easy to follow. And I 
don't know what size I made, <laughs> but it's actually pretty hefty. Um, it's a worsted weight pattern because it's Karen Simply Soft, and I, I still have a ball of the leftovers in my bin over here. I don't want to make another one of these. I should probably wear it though. So let's weave in the ends and wear it for actual sweater weather. This next one is from Expression Fiber Arts. This is the only other crocheted sweater top that I have, and it is the Aylin sweater. Okay, so I started this March 21st of 2023 and finished it April 8th. I thought that was a two. I can't read my own handwriting. April 8th of 2023. I did use one skein. All right, we got cut off. Where was I? Right, we were talking about Aylin. Aylin! Expression Fiber Arts. Um, I did this, started March 21st, 2023. Finished it April 8th, 2023. Um, I used one skein of the suggested yarn, which was the Dewey DK from Expression Fiber Arts. And the others were single skeins of Tranquil DK. That is a yarn base they no longer have. Um, it was, what was it? I think it was like 100% American wool or something like bred and sheared and spun and dyed American wool, I think. It was really cool. I loved it and I got, I think, every color they had <laughs> at the time. And so I did um, every other row, I alternated colors so that way I would get this look. Um, now looking at it, I think this is like the same stitch pattern as the one from Your Inspirations, the jewel toned one, uh, like a half row of, a half row, a double of, what? <laughs> A row of half double crochet followed by a row of single. Um, so with my alternating skeins, alternating my different colors every other row, I came up with this. So the one color, color skein that was recommended yarn was this teal color. You can see it more on the sleeve. Um, and I did it for the neckline ribbing, but I have not blocked this yet. I made it over a year ago and I still haven't blocked it, but that's okay. There's no knitting police that are gonna come after me and be like, you have to block your project. But this is Aylin, Expression Fiber Arts. Yeah, I made the size small according to pattern measurements. Um, and it is a little more tight fitting than I normally like, but that's okay because I like it. All right, um, is that seven? I think that's seven. We are just over halfway there. Next up comes also, what? Also comes from Yarn Inspirations. This was in 2020. This was one of the sweaters I made at our old house. Um, and it's, it's the turtleneck, <laughs> my Tweety turtleneck, um, raglan style. This is the adults knit turtleneck pullover. Like that's the pattern name. It's a worsted weight pattern and it was supposed to be made with Karen Simply Soft. I did not use Karen Simply Soft. I used yarn from AC Moore. So yeah, um, so it's a little more bulky than what Karen Simply Soft is. This is also a worsted weight, but the Karen Simply Soft is a little a thinner worsted than what this was, but I wanted tweed because you know, you know me, tweed. Um, raglan style. I did the size medium also again I don't do gauge swatches and I did a 
red X on the back. <laughs> so that way I would know which side's the right side, which side's the back front, what? Front side, back side. There we go. Yeah, so I used yarn from AC Moore, no longer available. I think I still have a little bit in a cubby down there. Um, but I love this turtleneck so much. Um, I want to make it again, <laughs> but I don't know what yarn I want to use. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I would, a fuzzy turtleneck. That would be, that would be so fun. But I loved making this. It was my first time doing a raglan style anything. And I think I did a pretty good job for a first time doing raglan. Um, fairly easy pattern from what I remember. Was it? Yep. It was done in pieces and seamed. And yeah. I think I did a pretty good job. I like this one. I have washed this several times, thrown it in the washing machine because, you know, you get makeup on the inside of the neck and it's kind of gross and so I washed it. That's partly why if I do make this again, I will make it in a machine washable yarn because ain't no way I'm scrubbing makeup out of hand wash only. Not happening. But yeah, this was 2020. This is from Yarn Inspirations, and we are moving on. This is the third sweater from November of 2023. Um, the other two were the darker stripe hype and the Lumi sweater. That's the cropped one because I hated the yarn. Um, this is another stripe hype, but in Christmas. Yeah, so this was stash yarn. Um, it's all acrylic and it's worsted weight. The original stripe hype was DK. Um, I started this November 18th, finished it December 2nd. I still made the size medium and I still use the same size needles and it is big, oversized and boxy and I love it. Um, the white color was Karen one pound in the color white and then the red I believe was also Karen one pound. Doggy's barking. Or it was um, Lion Brand Pound of Love in the color red. And then the multicolored was the Hobby Lobby I Love This Yarn in the color Christmas. That was the one that actually inspired this Christmas sweater. Smetter. <laughs> Christmas sweater. Um, I liked the red and green and white multicolor with a string of silver tinsel on it and I wanted a sweater out of it so I made it stripes because why not and then the green is from AC Moore again it was a one pound of mystery yarn so I don't actually know what the color is called I just know that it's also acrylic um, and then for the contrasting color on the cuffs, I used uh, Karen Simply Soft Party. So it has some sparkle in there. That's the red. And then the bottom hem is the same yarn, but in green with sparkly. And then for the contrast color in the neckline, I did the Hobby Lobby Multicolored again. Hi. So for the neckline, it was Hobby Lobby Multicolored, again, because why not? Um, I love this sweater so much. It is giant, oversized, and boxy, and comfy, and I will be wearing this all throughout December, and possibly starting like Thanksgiving, and past New Year's. You can't stop me. This next one is the one that launched my channel. It is the Weasley sweater. <laughs> um, I made this, well, I started this July 18th and finished it August 1st of 2023. Um, I timed myself on this one to see if I can make a sweater in 24 hours. Um, of course, this was spread out over the course of two weeks because I'm a mom of three and it was summer and we were busy. Um, it took 
about like 18 hours and 15 minutes ish ish over the course of two weeks um yeah so this is from the harry potter knitting book um i used stash yarn like always um ac more in a tweed the color was forest green and then i used the same yarn in the color butternut for the letter the letter was done in duplicate stitch um I do have one issue with it though. The neck band is a little funky on one side, so I need to fix that. But other than that, I have no complaints about my sweater. Um, I may make it again. I will make it again in a different color because you need more than one and a larger size because I want it to be more oversized. Um, but yeah, I have no complaints with my Weasley, with my Weasley sweater and I love it. Other than a funky neckband on one side, I don't remember which side it is. I know what side it is when I put it on, but I can't tell at the moment. Um, yeah, it's my Weasley sweater. I love it. Everybody needs a Weasley sweater. Okay, we have three more. Okay, bear with me. We're almost done. This one was supposed to be a Valentine's Day sweater. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> I started it January 22nd of this year of 2024. Finished it February 20th, 2024. Um, didn't quite finish it in time for Valentine's Day, but that's fine. Who cares? Um, it is the Fleming hoodie from Blue Sky Fibers. So it's a raglan v-neck sweater with a hood. It's my hoodie. Okay. I used stash yarn for this. Um, this is a rare instance where I did swatch because I was combining a worsted weight and a fuzzy yarn. And I wanted to make sure that I was getting the right uh, gauge because it's supposed to be a super bulky. Um, and I did. I didn't block the gauge. I just did enough rows to make sure that I had, that it was correct. And it was. So, uh, stash yarn, obviously. Um, I did the size small according to my size and pattern instructions. Um, so the main color, the pink, the normal pink, not the fuzzy, the normal pink. Um, I don't have a label for it. I think it was, again, one of those one-pound mystery bags from, like, AC Moore or something. I, I shopped a lot of AC Moore before they went away. Um, it's a dusty rose color. It's a worsted weight. It's acrylic. And I paired it with um, a brushed yarn, also from AC Moore, that... Hold on. Right here. Um, it is classified as a bulky, and it's just... fuzzy. It's a brushed fuzzy yarn. Um, so I paired those two for the main color and then I decided to do contrasting color for the uh, ribbing on the bottom hem, the cuffs, and the hood. And I did the same thing. I did, um, I think this whole entire thing was made in AC Moore. So the normal non-fuzzy yarn was called deep wine and then the brushed one was called plum it's this one oh and then the the brushed fuzzy pink one was called mauve and yeah oh and it has thumb holes and the cuffs so that makes it really fun it is really warm. I think because of the fuzzy and because of the weight of it, I do want to make it again because I don't want, <laughs> it's acrylic. Okay. And which is, you know, basically plastic, but I do want to make it again in a natural fiber because why not? I love it. I really like the hood. I 
do plan on wearing this when it gets to be a little more chilly, but it's not quite chilly enough for a thicker, heavier, thicker, heavier, what? I plan on wearing it. That's all you care. That's all you need to know. Okay. Yeah, Fleming hoodie from Blue Sky Fibers in a size small and it fits just fine. I love it. All right, we are down to our last two. Now this one I think was on my fall knitting plans for 2023. Um, I didn't start it until April. <laughs> I started it April 4th of 2024 because we had a random like twilight feeling day. It was rainy and gloomy and perfect and so I started a sweater. I didn't finish it until September 10th because I was working on it off and on and stockinette got boring and I needed a little something different. <laughs> that was why. But Malvarosa. Now this one has uh, bishop sleeves on it. So it's um, no decreasing on the sleeves until the last round. Then you do rapid decreasing, like uh, knit two together all the way around. And then you do the cuff. I made the size B according to my measurements and the pattern directions. I did use the suggested yarn, which is Expression Fiber Arts Dewy DK. I used the color Evergreen because green. And I have no complaints about it. I was just bored of stockinette. Stockinette gets boring sometimes, guys, and that's what makes me not want to finish patterns. Um, I still need to weave in ends. As you can see, I did block it, um, but before, during blocking, I realized I didn't uh, close up the holes in the underarms from joining in the yarn for the sleeves. So I need to do that. Um, and then this sweater also has the option of having embroidery across the yoke. I do plan on doing that. I'm not in a hurry to do that, but I do plan on doing that because that will just elevate this sweater and make it gorgeous and to die for. Um, yeah, so Malvarosa from Expression Fiber Arts. Oh, and another thing. Um, EFA is hand-dyed yarn, and I know you're supposed to alternate skeins with hand-dyed yarn so you don't get random color pooling. I don't do that. <laughs> I don't. I don't have the time. Well, I do have the time. I just don't want to. And so you'll see some like color pooling, random color pooling in places. I like it. Okay. It truly makes the piece unique. There is not another sweater like this one because I didn't alternate my hand dyed skeins and you do you, but I don't do that. All right. Now this last one, I love it, but it has issues. Okay. I started this one on my birthday. So I started it August 10th, finished it September 7th, and I love it, but I'm also sad. <laughs> this is the Sweet Gum Cardigan from Expression Fiber Arts. Okay, I used the suggested yarn, which was Twisted Tweed Sport. I used a kit, a three skein gradient kit. The colors are no longer available. And then for the cuff, I grabbed a single skein of a darker blue because I thought that tied in nicely. Um, now, my issues with this, I have blocked it, but my issue is that it's six inches too short. Okay, I made the size four and I followed the pattern instructions exactly according to my size. I, my gauge was spot on because you know, I don't make gauge swatches, but I check periodically and it was spot on. And I did try it on throughout the entire making of it. The front is where I would want it to hit. 
like at the top of my high-waisted jeans. Um, but for some reason, while trying it on, I didn't turn around and check the back. And the back is um, like right here. The back is a little short. It is, it's like six inches too short and I don't, I really don't understand. Um, I don't, so I have to fix it. Um, I did do an Italian bind off though. So I, I need to take out the bind off, undo, frog the ribbing, I, and then add another six inches. I would cut it off, but there's cables in the button band. And so one side has the buttonholes, the other side is the one that you put the buttons on. And then if I would cut it, I would still have to figure out what row I was on. And so it's just easier if I, anyway, it's just easier if I take out the bind off and just knit another six inches from there. So other than randomly being too short somehow, but I knit it according to directions and my gauge was on, I don't understand, but it's beautiful and I want to fix it soon so that way I can wear it soon. Um, but yeah, so this one and Malvarosa are the last two I finished. Honestly, the, the one before this one, Malvarosa, all I needed was like that much left of the sweater and then the cuff and I was done. I was procrastinating that much. Um, but this one, I did it pretty fast because it was my birthday knit. Anyway, that is all of my sweaters that I have made and I cannot wait for sweater weather. Are you ready for sweater weather? Because I most definitely am. <laughs>